This video is brought to you by Paradigm Human Performance. Yeah, today's going to be a bit more of a vlog style, so if you're not a fan of those types of vids and you're just looking for straight up advice on a tangible topic, then flick over to one of the Toolbox Talks. If you're looking for a bit more of an insight into the day of a person like me, a consultant, I don't know what I am, or if you may be looking to see what this training centre is doing to give yourself some inspiration, then maybe this video is for you. Um, or just leave it playing in the background, mute it, leave it playing in the background so that I still get all the... Um, analytic things on the YouTube, hashtag con the system. <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna drive to the place now. I'm gonna think of something to listen to. Morning, I'm doing something a bit different today. I have been invited to go to to see a new training center. Look at the mess. This is what having a child is like. This is all lovely and organized. Anyway, I've been invited to go to um, a training center, an innovative training center put together by Wing Canton. Peter Jenkins from Project Meletium has organized it. Um, it's quite a lot of us going. Um, not just from PM, there's a few people going. We've got approval to kind of bring you along, so we're gonna bring you along. I need to get ready, because I need to get on the road in like 10 minutes, and ideally drink a coffee. I feel like I'm gonna have a bad hair day today. <laughs> Went back to rugby training last night. Something I retired from about two years ago, and uh, oh my God, I'm in so much pain. This week, I've been having to get up at the crack of frickin' door. Been working with a, a client that's a waste company. You can imagine what time waste companies start. So I'm like, oh, I want to go out with the drivers. How can I go out with the drivers? Can you get here for 5 p.m.? <laughs> no, no, a.m. Uh, no. Can you get here for 7? I'll take 7. I'll take 7. This didn't start till 10, and it's a 45-minute drive. So nice laying this morning to recuperate from last night's training session. So I feel like I've bruised my own ribs. I feel like I've elbowed myself in the ribs. I just genuinely thought it'd be nice for you to see what Wing Canton are doing. Maybe give you some ideas of what you can do for your training needs. Your training centre if you're building one. Obviously, you need the resource and the money. Anyway, let's get in the car. Daddy's got to take a COVID test now. I thought, whilst just getting ready slash <laughs> on the way, I would talk about doing like the weird stuff that kind of like networking like today like anybody want to come and see our, our new training center we've got an invite blah 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 and I was like yeah yeah let's go but then you kind of think in your head like why what like I'm, especially if you're self-employed like when you become self-employed if you are looking to do that and you're you know you, you're a consultant you're like I'm not doing anything that's not paid on that day but the irony is that you need to do the things that are not paid, like networking and stuff like that. And I think that applies just as much if you're not self-employed. But I understand the pressure a bit more if you are self-employed. Yeah, doing those things that you think faster route available, uh, yeah, uh, turn around. <laughs> you're doing those things that like, you're kind of like, or maybe even your boss, if you're employed, is like, why would I let you go and spend the day looking at someone else's site. I'm not getting anything out of that because we're so addicted to immediate um, return on investment. We've forgot about like kind of inspiration and we've forgot about, you know, collaborating and, and building connections and relationships that are outside of work that ultimately don't automatically give you a return on investment or value on investment either you know so today if I was employed I'd still like to go to, uh, to a thing like today because I want to see how other companies are kind of working on be being innovative on their training so when somebody says do you want to come along and see an innovative training center I'm like yeah because I want to see how from my point of view I want to see how my clients can build maybe like an innovative training centre. So it gives you inspiration. Also, you'll meet people there that you might not get any return on investment within that job. You might even get some return on investment later on. If you're a consultant, we all know the power of networking if you're a consultant. You know, the people that I've known for years and never got anything really out of them because I've never tried to. I never wanted to get anything out of them. But now, 
they have been watching the videos, the podcasts, and so on, and we've been friends and chatting and stuff. And now it's like, oh, I know a guy that's got some business that wants like someone like you. I think it'd be perfect. And when you're a, when you're not a consultant, when you're self-employed things like that look slightly different but still valuable like my old boss still really friends with with one of my old bosses and he works in the, the waste industry and now I'm currently working for a client um, in the waste industry so I'm like ringing him like every day being like what do you do with this what do you do with that what do you do with this I'm not just gonna copy and paste what he does but it helps give me that inspiration so next time that something comes up that you're kind of like why should I go to the expo? It's just a jolly. Why should I go and, you know, have coffee with this person? It, it's just when I should be working. And you feel maybe a bit guilty because I used to before I worked for myself. If I ever wasn't in the office or on the laptop, I felt guilty. I felt like I should be at work. And that gets draining, really draining. And, and being self-employed gives me that freedom to make that decision for myself. And ultimately it's really scary when you're self-employed because you might not have had the business or the money coming in that means you can afford a day just going out looking at what other people are doing or chatting and networking all right but ultimately the important thing here is networks relationships i think for me that's what you're going to get out of this more than anything you're going to get inspiration out of something like doing something like this going to see what someone's doing you get ideas and that's really good and that's probably how you sell it to um, your boss that you're looking for inspiration that you're getting ideas that you you, you want to build an innovative training center within your company but you don't really know how to do it whatever that looks like right but ultimately for you as a professional the difference is the network the relationships that you can build I have built so many relationships off befriending people that are on the same level as me, that are 10 levels ahead of me, that are older, younger, and just made as many friends as possible. Build a network and it will pay back dividends, 100%. Because you can get sucked into just, I'm only doing something that gives me immediate value, but that doesn't work. So I thought I'd mention that as a driving on the way to Leicester, of which I'm gonna be bang on time. Stick with box, whatever, that assist people rather than replace people. I hate to break it to you, James, that fire's getting pretty big. <laughs> Look at this. So I put that on the back of my top on the net and then that can tell if I'm manual handling correctly. Yes, yeah, so it's got a gyro stuff and learning through AI. Just literally just yeah, edit it. I'm so glad I got that. <laughs> wow. So yeah, today we went to a um, uh, training centre. I played some clips uh, from it. It was mostly just kind of in the track, in the in the room, um, and I kind of the 
the power of networking was kind of demonstrated in that room by the, the powerful conversations that we had within there. Like, like fair play to the team from Wing Cannon for being like really open and asking, all, uh, answering the questions that sometimes are really hard hitting. We were asking some really hard hitting questions, and they were, you know, being as open and honest as they could. Um, and that's really nice to see. That's really good to see from a from a, a, a big company like that. So you can see all that innovation, and you know, he was getting help from from the stuff that we were saying, and we were obviously all getting inspiration and help from um, the stuff that they're doing there. Um, so I think the power of networking was was you know evident in that room. Um, you know what they're doing is phenomenal. Ultimately, like I said earlier, like got some concerns around. Uh, got some concern. I haven't got some concerns for them. Um, I got some concerns for the profession and how we innovate and safety at work and and so on. That we've still got so far to go. We're using accidents as as our primary measure when really we're not sure what our primary measure is and whether that that kind of demonstrates value. Um, we're still kind of using innovation in in a way to just reinforce stuff that we know doesn't really work like you know roll calls in fire evacuations you know most they don't really work they rarely rarely work they're a very weak system um they're a very weak system for keeping track of who's in a building yet we're just innovating on delivering systems that are regurgitating things that haven't changed for a very long time we did some VR stuff. I thought the VR stuff was phenomenal. Um, everything that we are doing uh, there is, is just unbelievable. Um, so, yeah, like, like the a bit. The only the only catch with VR is that it's so costly. Like I think they, they were saying that it was kind of like nearly 11k to create kind of like a VR course which is just for some companies it's way out like not even anywhere near the budget that they would have so you know i would love to have vr for like the training that we would deliver for our customers but ultimately how how are you going to do that when it costs 11 grand to put together you know but it's such a shame that it costs that much because to be able to deliver that element of realism or that access to <clears throat> not realism I suppose but as close to real without putting person in danger is phenomenal you know that's that's a tool that we've never had before we can put people in a situation where there is a fire without putting them in a situation where there is a fire um, so that's just phenomenal <clears throat> the problem is it costs so damn bloody much um, so there's so much amazing stuff being done for innovation I'm worried about um, the kind of connection between evidence-based practices um, and, and new technology and then also uh, I'm worried about the accessibility for those small medium-sized businesses and, and maybe even consultants or whatever um, that are trying to innovate but ultimately it's not that accessible because of the sheer cost of it and I'm not saying that people should re re reduce the cost because I would suspect it takes a lot of time skill effort etc to be able to put that stuff together um, but ultimately very powerful me in today uh, network as much as you can people um, and hopefully you'll get as much value out of it as, as I do um, but it is a socially kind of awkward thing to do so I understand if you don't like it but maybe I'll do a video on that one day because um, that's been a big challenge for me as well um, hope you've enjoyed this video hope you're enjoying the blog style as well I, don't, I, I appreciate they're a bit messy uh, but ultimately thanks for watching catch you next week safe